MKLeo has been on a disgustingly dominant stretch of competitive ultimate that started at Momocon and has carried through the entirety of the second PGR season. But exactly how heavily has Leo dominated the game? And how does his current run stand up to some of the most dominant stretches in Smash history? Well, that's exactly what we're looking to answer with this video. And if you're looking for some guidance in ultimate from the man himself, check out his course as well as on-demand coaching on ProGuides.com to get you prepared to compete at the next major. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new pro course with MKLeo himself, a new one with Esam, as well as others coming soon. But with that out of the way, let's first roughly outline MKLeo's run on Ultimate before we start comparing him to other legends. MKLeo obviously had a strong PGR Season 1, as he finished at the top of the list, but it was far from dominant. His lowest placing, that will probably stand forever as his lowest ever placing in Ultimate, was his 33rd at Umebura Japan Major in Japan. The two local players who pulled this off were TKM, a Peach Main, and Umeki, a Daisy Main. His next lowest placings during the first season were his pair of 7th place finishes at Pound in 2GG Prime Saga. At Pound, he was knocked into losers by JW, who played Greninja against MKLeo's Lucina and Wolf across the three-game set. After a lengthy run through losers, MKLeo was eventually eliminated from the event by Salem Snake, and at Prime Saga, which happened just a week before Pound, MKLeo lost to Mr. R in winners and was eliminated in a Game 5 set by Light. He also had two fourth-place finishes during this run, one at Glitch 6 being knocked out by Nairo and one at Gommel being knocked out by Esam. You may be saying, fourth is still a really great placing, why would you have to point that out? Well. It's because MKLeo hasn't finished lower than second in 11 straight events since his fourth at Gommel, and he's won 8 of those 11 events. These aren't smaller regionals or pushover events either. Smash and Splash, CEO, Smash Con, Summit, Evo, all huge events in the Smash and FGC community. MKLeo can also boast the fact that he's only got two non-winning records against the entire field across this season. The two outliers are his 1-1 record with Esam where he lost Game 5 to its Summit where he went on to win the event and his 0-1 record against Kameme where he lost at EVO and went on to win the event. For a point of comparison, Sam Sora, who is arguably number 2 in the world right now, has 8 non-winning head-to-head records. So, needless to say, MKLeo is on a bit of a tear lately. His run has for sure been a spectacle, and he's easily the most dominant and consistent player Ultimate has seen in its short life cycle. But he is far from matching some of the most dominant runs in Smash of all time. The most well-known and recent story of a lengthy grasp over the number one spot in Smash comes from Zero. He only ever was ranked number one on Panda Global's official Smash 4 rankings that he appeared on across the game's entire life cycle, which is something that MKLeo has matched so far in Ultimate, but he's still got many more years to build up a legacy to match Zeros. And his current run of 11 straight events of only finishing top 2 pales in comparison to Zero's run of 50 plus tournaments. So MKLeo's got a long road to match Zero. And if MKLeo is far from Zero, he's miles away from Armada. In the last decade, Armada has never finished lower than top 8 at any tournament he wasn't playing secondaries at or had to DQ from. And MKLeo may only have two non-winning records in this PGR season, but Armada has a positive head-to-head -head record against every single player except two that he has ever faced in his Melee career. His 0-2 record against Japanese Melee legend Captain Jack and 0-1 record against Silent Spectre stand as the two outliers. And for consistency, Armada only lost the top six players after his loss to Amsa Sheik at Pound 4 in 2010 all the way until he lost to Swedish Delight at EVO 2018. Armada is Melee's GOAT for good reason, and MKLeo would have to keep his only finishing top 2 streak alive for essentially the rest of Ultimate's existence to match Armada's legacy. Our last comparison point, Hungrybox, is the closest analog and domination and career path to MKLeo that I think we have in Smash. Both hovered around the top 10 for a while, getting closer and closer to breaking through. From Smash 4 PGR V2 to V5, Leo went from 8th to 2nd to 4th, and finally finished 1st on the last ranking. From 2013 to 2016, HBox went from 5th to 5th to 2nd to 2nd, and finally grabbed number 1 in 2017, which he has held for every ranking ever since. Both benefited from the absence slash inactivity of the former number 1 during the rise, Zero in the case of Leo and Armada in the case of HBox, and both play a character that people wrongly assume carry 
carries them to their consistent victories, but has only seen minimal success outside their results with them. Where they differ is that Hungrybox has had to defend his claim to number one much longer than MKLeo. Three years compared to his two, if we include MKLeo's stint as number one at the end of Smash 4 to his current hot streak. So with just these few comparisons, we can see that MKLeo is still pretty far from having his face included on the Mount Rushmore of dominant Smash players. His reign may seem like it will never end now, and that every tournament is just a question of if anyone can beat him. But people thought the same about Zero and Armada and Ken and Mango, the list goes on and on. We'll have to just wait and see if MKLeo's control over the number one spot will be just a chapter in the story of Competitive Ultimate or will run through the entire book. And that about does it for this video. Do you think MKLeo will continue to be the man to beat in Smash Ultimate for the foreseeable future? Or do you think we'll see the king get toppled soon? And if you think there's someone coming for the crown, who do you think is going to be the player to do it? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future.